So in this video you will learn how to create this fully procedurally and dynamic fish swarm from which you can change for example the location, the rotation and you will even be able to make it interact with objects within your scene. To create this effect we're going to use the following formulas. With the first formula we're going to determine the initial x and y angle between the position of the empty and each fish. Then with the second formula, we update the angle so that we can generate new x, y, z positions over time. And then in the last formula, we're going to use this new x, y, z position to update the velocity of the fish so that it can actually move to a certain direction in a good way. But don't you worry about these formulas yet. In the tutorial, we will go a little bit deeper into them. But for now, let's get started with the tutorial. So we're going to start off, as always, by going into geometry nodes. And then in the geometry notes tab, let's click on the cube and let's click on new to create a new geometry notes for the cube. We're going to start off by removing the group input because we don't need the actual cube. What we are going to start doing is first creating a ball of points. And we're going to make this as easy as possible. So we're just going to do a UV sphere. And this UV sphere, we first want to convert this into a volume by doing a mesh to volume node. And we don't have to change anything to the mesh to volume. So let's not pay too much attention to it. But now we have this volume and inside of this volume, I want to scatter around a lot of points. So we do this with a distribute points in volume node. And then with the density, we can determine the number of points that we want to have. For explanation purposes, we're going to keep this on one for now, but later in the video, we will crack this up to like 10,000 or something like that, so that we are generating a lot of fishes at the same time. But let's set this back on one. So the first thing that we're going to do is taking a look at the first formula. And for the first formula, basically what we're going to determine is we're going to take the X value of this point and also the Y value of this point. And that creates a line like this, right? Like a vector. And we want from this vector, we want to determine this angle like that. Very good drawing, something like that. So that's what we're going to determine first. And we're going to do this first by creating a store named attribute node because this first initial angle is going to be an attribute that is stored within each point. And this is going to be a float. So we can keep it on a float because it's going to be just one number. And we can give this store named attribute a name and we can name this angle or something like that. And the first thing that we're going to determine is the y minus yc and the x minus yc. So to get the y i and the x y that's basically just a position node because that's the current position of each point and the coordinates of the c over here is the coordinates of the center point that it should rotate around and we're going to make that into an empty actually so let's do shift a and do an empty plane axis and this is going to be our center point for now we're going to keep this in the middle and by the way if you see that your geometry nodes disappears just click on the points and click over here on this pinned option so that when you click on the empty the geometry nodes will not disappear so to get the location of this empty we're going to drag from here the empty into the geometry nodes and now we have the location of the empty and this we want to subtract that from each other so let's do an vector math node which we set on subtract and we see that we have to subtract from the original position we have to subtract the position of the empty and now from this vector that comes out of this we want to divide the y coordinates from the x coordinates so first of all we want to extract the y axis and the x axis from this vector with a separate xyz node and if we connect that like this now we have control over the separate coordinates and now we can do a math node which we set on divide and we want to divide the y coordinates of this with the x coordinates of this and from this value that's basically the whole thing of this we want to put that in an arc 10 so let's duplicate this math node and let's set it on arc tangent basically we have now our initial angle and we only have to put this one into the store named attribute and then we have the first formula done already so that's perfect however yeah if we press play nothing is happening still because we're not simulating anything so that's logical so for that we want to go to the second formula because in the second formula we're going to update this angle over time but now it's good that we have a beginning angle at least and to simulate this we are of course going to use a simulation zone and let's connect that like this and like that and for the simulation input and the simulation output before we do the second formula i actually already want to create this velocity vector 
for each point. So if we do a store named attribute, we can set this from float to vector because the velocity is a vector. And we can name this v from velocity. And this velocity is going to update over time. So the store named attribute should call itself to update itself. So if we do an named attribute, which we set to vector, and the name is going to be v, of course, because it needs to call itself. And now we connect this. And now it's calling itself, it's, but it's not updating yet because we're not changing anything between this. To change anything between this, we want to do a vector math node, set this to add. And now if you set this to point 0.1 on the x-axis, for example, you will see, yeah, uh, the points are not moving, of course, because we're not telling Blender that it should move. We should tell Blender with a set position node that we should change the actual position of the points. So for the offset, we want to take this velocity attribute and connect that over here. And now it should be, if we put this in, now they are starting to move. But of course, we don't want this movement, but this is the basics of how we're going to update this velocity over time. Let's actually go back to that second formula and let's update this angle over time. And to do this, we're going to take this store named attribute over here, shift D it to over here, so that we can update this angle inside the simulation zone. And you see the updating one should call itself too. So let's do a named attribute and we can set this to angle and it should call itself. This angle, we should add something to that. So let's add a math node, which we keep on add because we want to add something. And the thing we want to add is this omega value times delta t. And this delta t, that's very easy. That's basically this delta time value. And this omega value, I found that that's basically 2 pi divided by a period. So basically with this omega value, we can kind of say how fast each rotation around the center should go, basically. So let's create this omega value by creating a math node, which we set on divide. And we want to divide 2 times pi divide this by for example three that's completely fine for now and this value we want to multiply that with delta time so that the simulation will actually act in a good way and not crazy so let's take this divide node shift d over here set it on multiply and let's multiply this w value with delta time and this we want to add to the angle and now we've done basically the second formula and if you press play it will update over time but we will see that later of course when we're actually going to combine this with the new velocity that brings us to the third formula or formulas i should say because we have an x y and z formula these are the new x y and z positions the new x and y position you see that those are dependent on that angle that we're calculating over here so that's good but the Z value obviously should not change because the fishes are not going up and down or something like that. They, they should go over the X and Y axis in rounds around the center point. So let's create these formulas now. Let's make a little bit more space. So what we're going to start off with is creating the X, Y and Z of the center point. And as you see, and as you remember, the center point is basically the position of the empty. So we can go over here and take this object info node for the empty, shift D it to over there, and we want to extract the X, Y, Z coordinates. So let's do a separate X, Y, Z node, put the location into the vector, and now we have the X, Y, and Z. Now let's create the cos angle and the sin angle. So we want to get the angle. So let's take this named attribute of the angle, shift D it to over here, and we want one version to be cos and one version to be sin. And to do this, we're going to do a math node, which we set from add to sign. So sorry if I confuse a little bit the Dutch terminology and the English terminology of these things, but for my whole life, I've been learning the mathematical equations in Dutch and not in English. So, but it will be fine, it will be good. So we first have this sign over here and let's plug that in over there. And then we already have this. Same we're going to do for the cos. So if we take this one and we put it over here in here, we can change this to cosine, of course. 
And you see that this cosine and this sine, we want to multiply that with some value of r. And this value of r is actually the radius of the circle that we're trying to determine. We have to calculate that first. And we're going to calculate this outside of the simulation zone. So let's calculate it before the store named attribute of the angle. And let's create a new store named attribute. And basically the radius is going to be the length from here to each point. And to get that radius, this line over here, we need to do this thing again. So we need to subtract the location of the empty from the position. So take this, shift D it to over here. And from this, we want to get the length. So we can basically do this by doing another vector math node, which we set on length. And then it will calculate the length from there to there. And then if we put this into here, obviously this should not be angle. Let's set this to R from radius. And now this radius value, we can use that over here to determine the new X, Y, and Z position. So if we take this store named attribute, shift D it to over here, we can set this to R and now we can get started. And now we can take this math node, duplicate it over here, set it on multiply and multiply the cosine value with the R value. Do the same thing for the sine over here. So take this one, shift D it to here, put the sine and multiply it with this radius value. And now we have this part of the formula already. And the only thing we have to do now is add this part to the center location. So if we take this center location, we can do a math node, which we set on add. And we want to add from the X location of the empty, the cosine of the angle. And then do the same thing for the Y of the empty and the sine of the angle. And this we want to combine that into a new vector, of course. And we're going to do that with a combine x, y, z node. And then we can put the x into the x and the y into the y. And now we already have this. We have the x and the y. Let's do the z a little bit later. I just, I first want to show you what this is going to look like if we are going to combine this with the velocity vector. So for this velocity vector, we need to do this. And this looks very hard, but to be honest, it's not. It's actually the new position minus the current position. So we can take that by doing a position node and let's do a vector math node. Set this from add to subtract. And we want to subtract the new position from the current position. And now also we see this uh, one divided by delta t. I don't want to do that yet. I want to first show you what it what this whole thing looks like if we update it with the velocity without doing this to really show you the effect of this part of the formula. So all of this creates the new x, y, z position. And now to update the velocity vector with this, we can basically put this one into the add over here so that we're adding each frame, we're adding that to the velocity. Now let's take a look what this looks like. It goes crazy, but you do see that it kind of goes in rounds already. And that's why we want to do this one divided by delta time so that it actually is a bit more controlled, so to say. I won't go too deep into the details what delta time is, but it's, it's, it basically makes it that it's a lot more controlled and it will look very good. So to do this, let's do a math node, which we set on divide and we want to divide one by this delta time value. And then this, we want to multiply that with the subtract node. So for this subtract node, let's do shift D to duplicate it. And we can set this to scale so that we can scale it with this one divided by delta time like that. And then it will look like this. And then it doesn't look good. It doesn't look good yet. They go into oblivion and that's because it goes way too fast at the moment. So we have to scale this velocity vector down a bit. So let's take this scaling vector, shift D it to over here. And now if we take this and set it on 0 0.001, then it should be, we play it and you see they go in rounds around the center, which is really cool. But I hear you thinking, all these notes, it's so much. And when I search something on the internet, I cannot find any information about it. I wish there was one place that explains every single note in geometry notes 
in a very clear way so that I have a good overview. But then I have good news for you because last month I released The Big Notebook. It's a book that explains every single note within Geometry Notes in a very clear way. The book is specifically structured to get you from the very basics to very advanced techniques. The book is available on my Gumroad right now, so definitely check out the link in the description to get your copy of The Big Notebook today. And with that being said, let's continue the tutorial. So now that we have the points rotating like this, I think it would now be good if we crack up the number of points in our simulation. So in the distribute points in volume, let's set the density a bit higher. Somewhat like this is okay. Yes, for now that's okay. So if we press play now, you see it does kind of work, but the thing becomes very small, right? Plus it's all not really that randomized. So let's first create it that it becomes bigger. And to make it bigger, we want to make the radius bigger. So let's do this by putting between this subtract node and the length node, another vector math node, which we're going to set on multiply. And actually we want to keep the Z axis on zero because the radius should only apply for the X and Y axis. And we want to do for the X axis one, for example, and the Y one. Now, if we do this, then you see it's, yeah, it's the same because we're doing one. But if you set this to 10, for example, then you're already getting a higher radius like that. But now you see it's not, it's not randomized and all the points are in the same speed and that looks very boring. So let's randomize the speed of each particle. And we can do that by manipulating the omega value over here, by randomizing the omega value. And to randomize that, we can look over here because over here the omega value is created. We can do a random value node and also a math node, which we put over there. And we want to add a random number to this. You can keep that between zero and one. That's completely fine. And we can put that in and then you will see it's randomized and then it will go in a orbit like this. However, it now looks more like a galaxy, which is cool too, to be honest, but not really like a ball of fish. And that is because everything is still flat and the z-axis over here stays zero. We actually have that z-axis already, kind of. If you go into the beginning of the simulation, we basically have the z-location of each point, right? So we want to store that. We want to store this original position. So we're going to do that outside the simulation zone again. So let's put this over here. Let's do another store named attribute. This time it's going to be a vector because we want to store the original position. Let's name this OG boss, something like that. And then this value is going to be the position. However, since we want to work with a dynamic starting point, we also have to subtract from this position the location of the empty. So actually, let's remove this position node. Let's take the position subtracted by the empty, shift D it, and that's going to be our original position. And now let's go back over here to the combine XYZ. Let's take with a named attribute the OG position like this, and we want to extract the Z value of this original position. So let's take this separate XYZ, shift D it, connect it, and then we have that Z value. Let's put this Z value into the combine XYZ and let's see what happens. Then you will see it stays on its Z value, which is good. If you want to have good control over this, so for example, if you want to make it that the scaling, the Z scaling of the particles is dependent on the Z scaling of the empty, you can take this object info node, Shift D it over here. Also take the separate XYZ. And this time we want to connect the scaling. And then we have the Z scaling of this. And we want to multiply that with the Z scaling of the original position so that it's dependent on it. So if we do math node, set this on multiply and multiply this by the Z. Now you will see if I play the animation and I press S Z that the particles also go higher. And that's really good. But for now, I will keep it on the original value. Let's maybe make a little bit more overview. So let's take this whole thing and let's move it a bit to here and this one also to there. So now basically we already have all the formulas implemented and we're getting this very cool effect. But we can make this a lot cooler, of course. But before we're going to make it cooler, it's going to be a little bit easier to visualize all of this 
if these particles are actually fishes. Within this geometry notes, I'm going to use this model of the fish that I specifically created for this tutorial. And if you want to have it, you can get it for free in the link in the description. And now to replace each point with a fish, we want to go out of the simulation output and do an instance on points nodes. Set as the instance, we want to set the fish. So let's drag in the fish right over there and then put the geometry into the instance. And then you see that works. Let's make the scaling of the fish a little bit smaller, like so. And now if you press play, you see the fish are not really following the movement that they are actually doing. And to make it happen that that's actually the case, we want to make the rotation value over here dependent on the velocity that it goes to. So if we take this named attribute of the velocity and we press shift D to duplicate it and we connect that into the rotation, then you will see yeah, it doesn't really do anything yet. And that's because we have to do an align Euler to vector node so that we can align this vector to a certain rotation. And then you will see the fishes are following that movement and it looks really cool already. Maybe you see that you want to make your fish a little bit thicker Then you can make that manually over here in the Y axis like that. Or you can go into edit mode for the fish and actually make it thicker over there for example but that's up to you we can also move this fish out of the way so that we don't see it anymore and now when i press play you see okay it works however when i move it it only moves over the x and y axis and it doesn't go up towards the empty and that's because we forgot one thing in this formula we forgot to add the z coordinates of the center point of this empty so let's do that over here so let's do a math node Set this on add over there and add this Z value of the empty to the offset that we already had. And now you will see if you move it, it wants to move towards the empty too. However, what if I want to make the fish start from a different position than 000? Then at the moment, this happens, right? It doesn't start from this empty point. No, it starts from this 000 point. And then you're getting that the radius is very big. So let's actually make it that the fish start from the empty point all the time. And we're going to do this before the radius. We're going to do a set position node and we're going to just make the offset the location of the empty. So if we're now doing this then you see the fish start over there and then you see it works perfectly fine. However, you will see that when I move it, yeah, of course the fishes go to there, of course. However, I don't want that when the fishes are traveling towards the empty that they are rotating. No, I want them to go in mostly a straight line to the empty and then when they are arriving at the empty they should start rotating again. So to do this we first want to make the movement, the hard movement from going from here towards the empty in a straight line. And to do this we basically want to have the vector from the original position to the empty. So let's take this position node, take it, and we also want to take one of the object info nodes of the empty and we want from the location of the empty we want to subtract the current position of each fish and now we want to make it that it's either going to be this new position this new vector or it goes towards it so if we do a mix vector node and we plug that in over here we can mix these two together and then we can either make it vector zero then it's this one and vector one then it's this one let's check this so if we press play then you see it's now one so it always wants to go towards the empty and if i make this zero it starts rotating again so now we want to make it that if the fishes are close to the empty it should be zero and if they are far away from the empty they should go towards the empty and to do this i want to take the mean position of each fish first so to get that, you can do an attribute statistic node, which we set on vector. And then you can do shift and right click to make a joint over here and connect that like this. You can do this with the node wrangler add-on. And the thing that we want to have the mean of is the position. So if you connect that like this, now we have the mean position of all the fishes together. And then with a vector math node, we can determine the distance from the mean location of all the fishes to the location of the empty so if we connect the location like this now we have the distance from the empty to the mean of all fishes and if we connect this into the factor of 
the mix node. Now we'll have it that if, it, if the mean is closer to the empty, then it will start rotating. If it's further away, it will move towards it. Let's see if that works. So if we start again, we can move it. And then if we press play, then you see it works. However, the moving towards the empty is very, very slow. So to fix this, we also want to do for this movement, we want to multiply that by this one divided by delta t. So if we make a little bit more space, we can take this scaling node, shift D it to over there, and take this divide node and put that into the scale like this. Then you will see, okay, it works. And now it goes like that. If you want this to go even faster, you can do a math node, set this to multiply, and multiply this value by, for example, three and then it will already go a lot faster. Another problem that we're now seeing is that when I move it, you see the group becomes very small and all the fishes go into one position until they are at the center point again. So to fix this, we want to add to this a certain offset. And this certain offset is going to be the original position of each point. So let's make a little bit more space like this. And let's add to this empty with a vector math node, this original position and now if we move it it stays in that position what i think would be cool is if we make it that these fish can actually interact with objects in our scene so let's do that by first inserting a torus and then let's also add in a uv sphere for example and then this uv sphere and the torus let's select them both and let's press m and create a new collection for that and name this collision or something like that. So that we have a new collision collection right over here. Let's import this collection into our geometry nodes. And we want this to be on relative so that we're getting the actual location of these two objects. Also, we have to do a realize instances node because right now we have, we have instances and if we want to work with the actual geometry, we have to realize this. And now the thing that we want to do is if the fish is close to the mesh, it should avoid it. So let's first take a look on how do we determine if the fish is close. Well, we can do this with a geometry proximity node and the target is going to be the collection. And now we have the distance from each fish to this collection. And this distance value is going to be the factor of a new mix node. So let's take this mix node, shift D it over here, take this distance connected with the factor. And right now the A vector is the force on the fish that it will do if it's close to the object and the B value is when it's far away from the object. So actually this one should be in the B and the A value, the A force is going to be the normal direction of the closest face of the object. So to get the normal direction of the closest face of each object, we can do a sample index node, which we set on vector and the geometry is going to be this geometry, of course. And the thing we want to sample is the normal direction of each face. And now to say that it needs to be the normal of the closest face, we can do a sample nearest node, connect the index over here. And now the geometry is going to be the geometry, of course. However, we do have to set this from point to face, of course, because we're working with the normal of each face. And now if we plug this into vector A, then you will see if we press play and we move it towards the objects, then you see they do interact with it, <laughs> however, very slowly. So we have to make this vector over here a lot stronger. So let's do that by doing another vector math node. Set this from add to scale and let's scale this by 75 or something like that. And now if you press play and we move it, then you will see they interact with it very nicely with each object that we have created. And I think that looks really cool. Even when it's standing still, it's doing it. So like this, it, it doesn't want to interact with the object at all. Okay, the effect now looks really cool. However, the effect only really works if we do like thousands of fish. So let's generate way more fish. So let's pause the simulation for a moment. Let's go all the way in the beginning to this distribute points in volume. And let's make the density 10,000, for example. And then let's try again. And let's see, it looks like this. It's really cool. Click on the empty. And then if you move around, you see, oh yes, that works. That works really well. However, now you will see if you move the empty, you see that the moving part towards the empty becomes a little bit fast. So let's slow this down by adding a math node over here. And let's divide this distance value by two, for example, or any value that kind of works for you. But for me, two works. So let's see 
yeah, then it looks it looks a lot more realistic. So that's cool. I think it would also be cool if we can change the rotation of the orbit a bit. So what we can do is we can go between the scaling node and the subtract node over here, make a little bit more space. And then let's add in a vector rotate node. And this vector rotate, we're going to set this on Euler. Now, if we set, for example, the X axis on 45, it will rotate the axis like this. So as you see, it goes like that. And now something that is really cool is if we take the object info node of the empty and we shift D that to over here and we plug in the rotation value into the rotation. Now, if we select the empty and we press play and we press double R, so R, R, and you will see we can create a very cool rotation effect like that. This way you can animate the empty in a certain way so that the fish go in a very satisfying movement. And then when you stop it, it will, of course, automatically go back to the default rotation that it has. And another thing that I think would be cool is if we watch it from above, that there is like a hole that we can create like a hole inside of the orbit so that we can see inside it kind of. So to do this, we can go all the way to the beginning and we can change this radius value over here. So what we just want to do is very simple. Just do a math node and add, for example, three to the radius. And then you will see we're already getting a hole inside of it like this because we're adding three to the radius everywhere. And now the really, really, really last thing that I want to do is add in some noise so that it's not perfectly going straight like this, of course, because in real life it, there would always be some kind of waviness in it. So to add in noise, we want to do a noise texture like this and right now this noise texture goes from 0 to 1 but we want this to go from minus 0 0.5 to 0 0.5 so to do this we do a vector math node so that we can normalize it and then do subtract and we want to subtract from this one we want to subtract 0 0.5 and then we want to add this to the velocity so let's take this add node shift d it to there and let's add it to it let's take a look what it looks like already kind of getting something but it's not really that visible yet and to make it more visible let's make this a bit stronger so let's do shift d over here set this on scale and let's scale this by 50 so that it becomes 50 times stronger and then you will see they do start to go in directions like that but we have to change the noise texture a little bit so let's change the scaling a little bit lower so that we have bigger chunks of noise and let's set the roughness all the way down so that we have a smooth movement. Now let's take a look what this looks like. Yes, then we're getting a little bit more like waviness. And of course, you could make this stronger by making it 100, for example. Then you're getting it more like this, which is also pretty cool. But you see, the noise always stays the same. So the fish is always going to do the same pattern. If you want to change it so that the noise pattern changes over time, you can change this noise texture from 3D to 4D. And then we have this W value over here. And if you put a scene time note into the W value, you're continuously getting a new variation of noise. So let's take a look. Yes, then that looks perfect. So there we have our fish swarm, completely generated procedurally with geometry notes. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Comment down below if you have any questions. And if you don't want to miss out on any future videos, I recommend subscribing to the channel. And with that being said, check out the big notebook and I see you in the next one.